Yeah. Well, the way I described the ringer, especially in the first few years, it was, it was like the wild west. And that's the way that bill sort of operated, which was awesome. It's like, Hey, make it. And if you impress them, then you, then you win. Um, and if you're like a sicko like me, then you just, you're relentless about it. And so, um, so the early days were pretty crazy because we would all just get on the call and be like, what do you want to do today? Um, or we'd all meet in the, um, in the common space and, and sort of decide what we wanted to do. Um, you know, Bill's mandate was literally like make cool stuff end of story. Um, and so, you know, you got to experiment a lot, you got to fall flat on your face a lot, but you got to have big wins a lot. And, you know, that's what, that was around the time when I discovered that I had a knack for creating things that could go viral in specific moments. Right. So it's like, um, you know, Super Bowl. It's just like be online, use your knowledge of culture to create something that people are going to want to share and do it under the ringer brand. And so on social, I was really helping out with that, but you know, I'm still fairly new to production, which is sort of, um, you know, crazy in terms of like physical cameras and things like that. And so I started to, um, to dip my feet into that and to sort of try to create, you know, um, like series and things like that stuff that was essential to the internet. And that was something that I felt my lack of knowledge was actually a strength in some ways. Um, you know, because at the time this is pre COVID, you have to think pre zoom, pre all of that. It was like, I had like a specialty in low production, low, low, you know, low quality production. And so I would lean into that. And I remember, um, you know, me and some of the other video guys that had been to film school, they'd be like, well, it needs to look this way. It needs to look glossy. But I was like, why? People are watching this on their phone. Like, why do we need to to make everything so high quality? I think the the key is going to be to make things, you know, intimate. And th again, this is pre TikTok. This is pre all that. So, um, you know, I, I made a couple series um, that started to really take off and get some notoriety. And that's when that's around when my career really started to take a, a leap. When it was like yeah. we can bring Jason into to help, um, you know, add an original voice and, and hopefully reach people. So this is where the using an iPhone kind of comes in. Yeah. I think in your bio, it's like winning awards from using an iPhone or something yeah, like yeah. along those lines. But, um, yeah, I mean, people ask me all the time and you probably get it too. Like, how do I start a show? How do I start a podcast? And like, yeah. use your iPhone. It's literally all you need. Yeah. You don't need fancy cameras and a good, I mean, yeah, a microphone's great, but like you can literally start with your iPhone. It's yeah. It's more important than you worrying about what you need to use. Yeah. And content is just such a, it's, it's such an interesting, you know, game we're playing right now, especially right now, which is just like, um, y you have everything available to you and you have like, you have an audience, you just need to reach it. And that's what's like so crazy to me. And that's where it's like, you know, I'm a big shower, um, you know, uh, of uh, if I have an idea, I'll likely just do it and um, put it out into the ether and it'll fall flat or it won't. Um, but that was a little bit of the, the idea with some of these shows that I was doing. It was, it was like, all right, let's film it on the iPhone. We'll put it out. We'll see what people like and then we'll change it. And that was a big, big part of it. The evolution of these shows were pretty crazy. Um, you know, and, and the one that, um, that really took off was a show called NBA Desktop, which was... Uh, sort of a, you know, and looking at the NBA through the, through the world of the internet. Um, and so I took, you know, I worked with this guy, Jason Concepcion, who he himself had sort of gained notoriety just through his Twitter presence. Thank God he was a great talent because th that doesn't always work out. Um, but it, in a very similar way, like he, he just was so funny on the internet that we were, you know, it was kind of a match made in heaven. And he and I, um, we worked tirelessly on these shows, man. We would record for hours and hours and then I would edit it down to 12 minutes and it, but it just needed to move. It needed to pop. He was, you know, his frame was in the bottom left-hand co corner, almost like what you would see in a Twitch stream right now. And then he would just browse the internet and we would create our show rundowns through Google docs and the audience could see that. Um, 
And so, yeah, that, that's the show we wound up winning an Emmy for. We were nominated twice, um, digital innovation, which is sort of funny, but, um, but yeah, it's, that's, that's, uh, that's where things started to really change. Yeah. So you're starting to find your feet at this point. You feel like yeah. you're not just like treading water, like you were in Chicago by just taking, no. saying yes to everything. You're like, I do this now. Like, this is my job. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and, and it's, it's always, um, you know, that, that, that is where I felt like I was at my strongest was, was, you know, at the ringer had a whole team sort of mm. able to, you know, f- fulfill a, a specific vision or whatever. So that was, that was really cool. Yeah. And then we started to do like more higher profile things, um, like the game of Thrones after, after show that we used to do. And, um, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. What was like that? I guess that, I mean, the fan in you must be geeking out when you're meeting these people or talking to these people on the phone and you're like, I mean, it was there, you talk about your idols earlier. Like, is there any idol moments? You're like, Oh my God, I'm talking to, you know, this person or this person's in the office and he's just like, Hey, what's up? There's, there were several, um, like, so we worked on a, the ringer's office was in a studio lot on, it was called sunset Gower studios. And we shared, we shared our studio with Shonda rhymes who makes Grey's anatomy and, uh, all those, those sort of like crazy, you know, popular shows, but it was, it, it was so stupid because it was like, we were a bunch of bloggers and then, mixing it with the beautiful people of LA. Um, so there was a couple, there was one time where I was in late and I like walked into a scene where Viola Davis was like, and they had to cut cause I walked in it. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but you know, my, there was a couple favorites. One of them, you know, like I said, I'm a big SNL guy and Bill Simmons brought Bill Hader through the office and he just like stopped in an office with me and, uh, buddy Kevin Clark and, Brian Curtis. And he just started telling us SNL stories kind of unprompted. That was sick. Um, you know, another one was, uh, Henry Winkler, the Fonz, uh, came into our office. He was looking for bill. Um, and I was like, Oh, let me call him. And I, and bill was going to come in 10 minutes. So we had to like kind of kill time with him. And, um, it was really fun because he was like, you know who I, I mean, Oklahoma's going to love this, but they were, he was like, you know who I like? He's like, I like James Harden, but you know who I don't like? I don't like Kevin Durant. And he was like, I don't think it's cool. What he, and I was like, dude, Kevin Durant is so in the doghouse that the nicest man in the world, Henry Winkler was like, I'm out. Um, so that was really cool. But yeah, I mean, it, 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 there was a moment in which, um, while I was at the ringer, I, I did a lot of parody songs as well. And those went super viral. And one of them was called Hallelujah, which was a play on Jeff Buckley or sorry, um, um, Jeff Buckley's version of Hallelujah, uh, written by Leonard Cohen. So anyways, uh, but we did this Hallelujah song. It, it blew up within an hour of going online and, uh, And so the Mavericks brought uh, me and my buddy in to perform the song. And then we got to meet Luka Doncic. It was a very fun, it was a very fun experience. Um, So stuff like that was really cool. And then seeing your stuff shared by, we did a Hamilton parody uh, and I sang on that one. It was one of the few ones where I was front, um, front and center on and like Lin-Manuel Miranda shared it and all these Hamilton cast people shared it. So those, those were like the times where it was like really, really cool. It's always a fun feeling when like, uh, uh, you know, when you make something like that and your phone's just blowing up, it's just great. It's super fun. 